Trend number two, customer service that is beyond reasonable has become the expectation. I recently did a Google search for what is a good reputation score and was surprised by the answer. Most websites agreed that a score higher than 600 on a scale of 1 to 1,000 was considered a good score. What? That's 60%. That's a D. Yeah, sure, that's a passing grade, but surely that isn't what we're striving to achieve, is it? A passing grade on your reputation? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't settle for that. And it turns out I'm not alone. There's a new way to calculate your reputation, and it's called Net Promoter Score. Have you heard of Net Promoter Score? Have you used it? Well, for those of you who haven't heard of it, I promise you've been asked by someone to participate in a Net Promoter Score survey. Net Promoter Score, or NPS, measures customer experience and predicts business growth. This proven metric transformed the business world and now provides the core measurement for customer experience management programs the world round. And it's all based on one question. Yep, a single question that predicts business growth. Here it is. How likely is it that you would recommend, insert organization name, product, or service, to a friend or colleague? You've seen that before, right? Maybe in an email after purchasing a product, visiting a hotel, hiring someone for a service. I was recently asked this question by my lawn care company when I was paying my bill online. They're trying to measure their NPS and they're counting on my willingness to answer a single question to help them out, which I did. It wasn't a long survey that took time. It was a single question asked before I could proceed to the billing page. Easy peasy. While the question itself might be simple, it's not as simple as yes, no, or true, false, or pass, fail. NPS actually uses an algorithm to determine the reputation score, and here's how it works. Customers answer the question, how likely is it that you would recommend organization, product, service to a friend or colleague? They are asked to answer on a scale from 1 to 10. Then respondents are grouped into three sections. Promoters are those who answered with a score of 9 or 10. These are loyal enthusiasts who will keep buying and refer others to buy. These customers fuel growth. These are the ones you want the most of. Anyone who answers with a score of 7 or 8 is considered a passive. A passive is satisfied but unenthusiastic. They are vulnerable to competitive offerings and unlikely to talk about your brand or product with others. Your business may not be hurt by passives, but they also won't help it grow. Detractors are those who scored the business from 0 to 6. These are unhappy customers who can damage your brand and impede growth through negative word of mouth. Here's how the math works. To calculate your net promoter score, subtract the percentage of detractors from the percentage of promoters. It's that simple. So if 50% of respondents were promoters and 10% were detractors, your net promoter score is of 40. Or if you're like me and not so good with the math, then you can just Google NPS calculator and just plug in the numbers and it'll do the math for you. Why is this important? If you've ever used the phrase, everyone knows me, or you believe that most of your business is word of mouth, then this is where the rubber hits the road. The reality is that you're probably right. Probably only a small percentage of new business comes from traditional or digital advertising, while most new clients are referrals. That's why it's so important to have a high NPS score. It's basically a measurement of how much business you are getting from or can expect to get from your referrals. The lifetime value of those new customers coming from referrals, including the money you saved on marketing or sales, comes from promoters. Meanwhile, detractors are responsible for negative word of mouth, so you can attribute any decrease in sales to them. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're asking yourself, what should my net promoter score be? Now, I wish there was a simple answer, but 
it's actually a bit complex. That's because NPS can vary by industry, region, or the characteristics of your customers, like age, income level, or time with your company. Here's a chart that may give you some insight into what the average NPS is for certain industries. Are you surprised by these? Or does it make perfect sense that people are pretty unlikely to recommend their internet service provider, their cable service, and their phone service? Dang, service companies have it rough. Meanwhile, people seem fairly pleased with their hotels and department stores. As for auto insurance, I was surprised at first, especially when you look at health insurance. Then I realized that most of us don't actually use our auto insurance that much, so that might be the difference there. If your industry isn't up here, there's a chance you could do some research online to find out some average net promoter scores of your competitors, but don't be surprised if that's harder than it sounds. Most small to medium businesses don't promote or share this information. But let me throw some big brands net promoter scores your way just to give you a feel for what you might expect. Let's start with Starbucks. They have a crazy loyal following of teen girls that regularly post pics of their frappuccinos. <laughs> You'd probably expect that most of their customers would be happy to recommend their product to a friend. And you'd be right. Their NPS is 77. That's a great number. Now let's look at a company that maybe has a little bit harder time making their clients happy. I'm going to cite AT&T here because I just saw a post from a friend on Facebook stating that he hates AT&T in all capital letters. Personally, I've used AT&T for years and haven't had a problem. But you'd be hard-pressed for me to give them a 9 or 10 if asked if I would recommend them to a friend. As happy as I am with their service, that is to say that I'm satisfied but certainly not blown away, I'd probably give them a 7 or 8. That means I'm neither a promoter or a detractor. I'm a passive. My friend would definitely be a detractor, and based on an NPS of 15, I think we can agree that AT&T has their share of passives and detractors. In their defense, Verizon has an NPS of 7, so we know that AT&T is doing better. Meanwhile, T-Mobile's NPS is 35. If you were going to get new phone service tomorrow, would that influence your decision? Or rather, here's the real question. Would knowing that more people who actually use T-Mobile would recommend them compared to AT&T or Verizon, would that impact your decision? Obviously, all of these brands do a ton of marketing, and if you look at their marketing, they all appear to be great companies. They all claim to have great products, great service, great prices. Only their NPS really tells you how their actual customers feel about them. And as a business owner, your NPS will tell you how your customers feel about your business. It may be the most important measurement you can take. In fact, I'd like to do a virtual poll right now. Get your phone out and go to davidmcbee.com where I have a form for you to complete. Answer the question on a scale from 1 to 10, would you recommend David McBee to speak at your next convention? I'm just kidding. Put your phones away. I don't have the guts to do that. Are you kidding me? I couldn't even take the rejection if my numbers came in lower than a 37, which happens to be Pampers NPS. <laughs> Quick aside, and do you think they surveyed the actual Pampers customers or their moms and dads? I know kids are getting online early and all, but nah, I'm sure it was the parents. <laughs> I'm going to challenge you. I'd like you to start asking your clients how likely they are to recommend your business. If you collect emails, send them a brief email. If you have an opportunity at the point of sale, do it right there at the cash register. It doesn't even have to be high tech. You could keep a clipboard handy and just ask every customer and then write down their number and do the calculations later. Find out what your NPS is. Establish a baseline and then focus all of your efforts on improving that number. Ask those detractors what you could have done better. Ask the passives how you could have exceeded their expectations. Thank the promoters and ask them why they love you and do more of that. Maybe even do something to reward their loyalty. 
Use what you learn to guide your decisions. Do you need better customer service? Do you need faster delivery, lower prices, more availability? Whatever you learn from the surveys, use it to improve your NPS and your overall reputation will improve. And that increase in business that you crave will follow. And here's the thing. You may be doing just fine. You may have happy customers overall and still not have a super high NPS. If it makes you feel better, Nestle's NPS is only a 14. I mean, they sell chocolate and other products, sure, but most people know them for their candy and who wouldn't recommend candy to a friend? Still, even if you're doing fine, you can always do better. Even if it means giving service that I like to call beyond reasonable. If it means you're going to have a promoter instead of a detractor or a passive, it might be worth a free meal when the steak comes out at the wrong temperature or any kind of special discount that you could offer for loyal customers. Think about all the money you'll save on marketing and sales if you can get more promoters out there talking about your business in a positive way. Here's an example. I recently bought some new sneakers from Shields. I am recovering from plantar fasciitis and needed some really good sneakers. Friends recommended Hoka's. I bought a pair and loved them for about two weeks. Then I felt this pain in the heel of the right shoe, like there was a tiny rock that I couldn't remove. Now, I couldn't see it or anything. I just felt it when I walked. I went to return the shoes, prepared to argue for an exchange because the shoes were a little worn and there was no visible way to see whatever was causing the pain in my heel. When I walked up to the shoe department, I told my story to the clerk. He grabbed a replacement pair and sent me to customer service where they exchanged the shoes, no questions asked. I was shocked. It was the easiest exchange ever. And here's the thing. I've never bought sneakers at Shields before. I normally buy from Academy. Now here's the million dollar question. Where do you think that I'll buy my next pair of sneakers? Exactly. Now the $2 million question, where do you think I'll tell my friends to buy their sneakers? Exactly. Their beyond expectations customer service will definitely win them new business, and in a way that marketing could never duplicate. Shields, by the way, has an estimated NPS of 69. Based on the story I just shared with you, is anyone surprised? No, me neither. You know, everyone has good products. Everyone provides fine service. It's, as they say, a buyer's market. If you don't impress the customer, they have a million other choices. So yeah, you really do need to exceed their expectations, even when those expectations are sometimes unreasonable. <laughs>